Big win for the New York Knicks out in the desert on Friday night. They dumped the Phoenix Suns 139 to 122. And it was also a big night for Jalen Brunson. So it's time to talk some Knicks hoops, and we're going to do it with a co-host for Knicks Fan TV, Alex Fateris, who joins me now. Alex, long time no see. How you doing? That's a long time no see. I'm doing great, man. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing good. Can't complain. You know who's doing good? Jalen Brunson. You know why? He dropped a 50-piece on the Suns, flawless from downtown, 9 for 9 beyond the arc. So i got to ask you this, Alex. Has Brunson taken his game to another level this season with the way he's been shooting the three ball? Oh, for the... From three, absolutely. It's taken to a whole nother level. I mean, and when you look at last season, Brunson was shooting about over 40. He was shooting 41% right now. 41% last season. Now he's shooting 46% on even higher volume. You know, he was doing that on about five attempts last year. Now he's doing that about on seven attempts this year, Dexter. And it's just incredible to see how Brunson continues to elevate his game. I mean, you look at all the other statistical categories, and it's pretty much even. But the fact that, you know, when you look at the usage rate, it's taken a slight dip. But then he's still able to be more efficient from the field. Last night just shows you when he's clicking, man, Jalen Brunson is a force to be reckoned with. And Kenny the Jet Smith, you got to get this man some props. I know you, you kept saying that uh, we had guys who are like number two or number three when we face opposing teams. This guy showed Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. He's number one. Hey, I had a feeling you were going to go there. I had a feeling you were going to bring up Mr. Smith, who said there are a lot of teams that had more stars than Jalen Brunson. But, uh, just saying, for Mr. Smith, I know the Knicks fans want to say this. Last night, you look, look pretty good. You look pretty good. So you can't, can't be mad at that there, right? Now, with this win, Alex, the Knicks, they improved to 14-10 and 10 on the season. Now they're 5-8 and eight against teams with winning records. So considering they just started a stretch on Friday where they're going to play 10 straight opponents with winning records, what did you like about the team's effort against Phoenix, and what do you think that win can do for them going forward? For the team's effort against the Phoenix Suns, Dexter, I mean, something that we have to acknowledge is that this team, who usually has flat third quarters for most of the time, came out strong. I mean, in the first half, they had about four turnovers, and then in the second half, um, they cut it down to only, I'm sorry, they had seven turnovers in the first half, and then they had four in the second half, two in the third quarter. So you talk about keeping your composure and playing at a higher level, being efficient with your shot making, that is something that we need to see from the New York Knicks because too many times they just come out flat uh, third quarters when they start to lose their 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 mojo. But last night they showed against a really good team. You have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker. This is a team that has been assembled. And I'm talking about the Phoenix Suns that is meant to have championship caliber expectations and the fact that the New York Knicks were able to come and organize themselves in the third quarter. And obviously you get that monster performance from Jalen Brunson who went 100% of the third quarter. He went 7-7 seven to seven from the field. It's just... That, that, of course, helped catapult them to another threshold and being able to secure the victory and stay in this game. But, look, the fact that this team was able to stay focused and compete, that's what you want to see. On top of that, the ball movement in last night's game is really what I love to see from the New York Knicks. When they're sharing the rock and not relying heavily on isolation, things start to look good, especially in that read and react offense that Tom Thibodeau likes to preach. And then, hey, the last thing I got to talk about is that second unit. You had that second unit really come up big uh, in the fourth quarter where you needed to create some cushion for the New York Knicks in order to, in order to keep that lead. And they did just that, especially after having a, a poor night against the Utah Jazz, having a strong bounce back game against a championship contender like the Phoenix Suns. That's great. And then for moving forward, you know, what it gives me or what it should give this team is that it gives them confidence, right? That you say, hey, we just competed with a top team in the Western Conference. You look at that Western Conference standings. Phoenix Suns still have a winning record and they're a playing team. All right. The Western Conference is no joke. Uh, so for them, it should give them confidence moving forward. On top of that, you're able to do this without Mitchell Robinson, right? So you don't have your top shot blocker out there, an elite offensive rebounder who cleans up so many things, not only on the offensive side when it comes to his rebounding, but defensively too. You know, he can cover the pick and roll very well he deters a lot of people who are attacking in the paint i mean dexter prior to last night's game i had the statistics the knicks were ninth in defensive rating and then as soon as mitchell robinson missed the next two games they dropped down to 23rd in defensive rating so the fact that they're able to uptick their offensive production without mitchell robinson that's been helpful and then julius randall's also been on a tear so you get julius randall with a good game you have jalen brunson who's clicking if i'm the new york knicks right now i'm feeling pretty confident moving forward after that game
Yeah, got to feel confident with a lot of things as you just hit on that you got to like if you're a Knicks fan in that game. Maybe most notable, the ball movement that we saw on Friday night. I want to go back to Brunson before we close. After the game, Kevin Durant said about Brunson that this is his franchise, talking about the Knicks. He's going to be a Hall of Famer by the end of his career, the way he's playing out there. That's pretty high praise from a future Hall of Famer. So I got to ask you this, in your eyes, how imperative is it that the Knicks maximize Brunson's prime years and improve their roster sooner rather than later? Dexter, it's so imperative. And, and when you look at what Jalen Brunson's doing for this team, you have a guy who's uh, honestly a superstar for this team, right? I mean, he's gained the recognition. I mean, you're looking at NBA commercials right now where you have LeBron James, you have other high caliber players as well. And Brunson's right in there with that doll commercial, right? Where you see all the everyone's uh, hanging on the steps and looking who's playing for the Christmas slate of games. And Jalen Brunson's right there, one of those action figures. Uh, so with that, if you're the New York Knicks and you see that you have a budding superstar, you have to go out there and make sure he gets the help needed. Now, they have Julius Randle who's playing well right now. You got a solid core uh, of veterans and youth on this team. But you need that next guy who can help relieve Brunson of that pressure, especially when it gets into crunch time, to make sure that, you know, the Knicks have that cushion to say, hey, if Brunson doesn't have it this night, like we saw against the Utah Jazz, there's somebody else that we can go to. And so for the Knicks, moving forward, they have to be patient and aggressive. And when you hear that, it's like, Alex, what do you mean? How do you, how are you patient and aggressive? Well, you got to be patient because it's not just any star you go after, right? It's not like you go after Zach Levine. I don't think it's Carl Anthony Towns that you go after. Um, you just don't make a trade just to add a name for the sake of adding a name. But now while you're being patient, you're not just choosing somebody because you got to look for the right fit. You got to be aggressive where you say, Hey, we can't just be idle and just say we have to keep all these assets moving forward because as we see these draft assets, you have players who are going on expiring rookie scale contracts that you got to make some deals to in order to get somebody on this roster to help Jalen Brunson. So it's a difficult balance uh, when you ask for a team to be, when you ask the front office to be aggressive and patient at the same time, because you just don't want to make that move that's just going to set your team back, right? I mean, we've seen it in the past, if you follow the Knicks for so many years, where you can make a, make a deal for a star, and then next thing you know, it just doesn't work out. So the front office has to be patient and aggressive at the same time to make sure that they can help Jalen Brunson continue to be as great as he is for the New York Knicks. No, it makes a lot of sense to me. You want to make sure when you make the move that it is the right move. But right now, Jalen Brunson, Knicks, coming off a big win against Phoenix on Friday night. We'll see how that moves for them going forward. They play the Clippers on Saturday night. Another tough test there in L.A. That is Alex Trotaris of Knicks Fan TV. Go check out his work there. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Alex, always good to talk some Knicks hoops with you. Thank you, man. Thank you, Dexter. Always talk love talking New York Knicks basketball with you, man. Have a good one. You too. Anytime.